I had a chance to teach a summer program a few years back in my hometown of New Orleans. I had a group of 32 young men, age ranging from 9 to 14, all black boys. I wanted to set a tone the first day of class. I wanted to compare and contrast the, the mindsets of the contemporary young folk in contrast to my constituents and how we grew up and how we aspired. So I asked them the old cliche question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Here were the responses. 29 said Kevin Durant. Three said LeBron James. Now I had two thoughts. First was I was flabbergasted because obviously these young boys don't know basketball because LeBron is the man if you ask me. But my second thought was the narrative still hasn't changed. The scope of possibilities is still very limited. Sports, streets, entertainment, we don't see ourselves really outside of those arenas. Something has to change. But my mom was an educator. She laid a very positive foundation for myself and my sister Charlene in regards to education. But what she did most importantly was she made me a dreamer. She opened up that scope of possibilities and now I'm the CEO of an organization that recruits black male teachers. Being a teacher is one of the most impactful ways you can see your impact as a professional. Being a black male teacher is a game changer. Being a black male teacher is becoming a superhero. So let's talk about it. Let's take a look at the landscape currently in the United States. Less than 3% of all teachers are black men. For my liberal arts majors, that's three out of 100. <laughs> now, black men are in classrooms as disciplinarians, as janitors, as intervention specialists, and definitely as athletic coaches. In front of the classroom, leading from an intellectual capacity, not so much. But I want to take the first stat and juxtapose it to that of another. Just one black male teacher in third, fourth, or fifth grade for a low-income black boy substantially reduces his chances of, dro of dropping out of high school by almost 40%. Let that sink in. Just imagine if he had two. And that's what I do. Kids are what they see. We, they need that affirmation. So I provide the mirror. We provide the mirror at Brothers Empowered to Teach. We recruit black male teachers. So how do we do what we do? Attachment. We offer a three-year undergraduate fellowship to college-age black men. Our criteria is simple. You got to have a 2.5, be enrolled at least half-time in college, and obviously be a black male. The first year of the program is just an observation year. We like to take a gradual, slow approach to teaching. We, let, we have an old saying in New Orleans, you can't microwave gumbo. You got, you got to slow cook it. And that's the approach we take with teachers. Year one is simple ob observation. You may uh, lead homework activities, recreational activities uh, for 10 to 12 hours a week. Year two and three are your lab development years where you learn the pedagogy, uh, classroom management, shadowing teachers, lesson plan, things of that nature. It all culminates in uh, placement into the classroom, but the really special source of our program is our internal personal and professional development, the Cypher Series. The Cypher Series is where our young men get a chance to break down and dissect, sort of recalibrate their compasses, if you will, in regards to being a black man in this world today, but also being a black man in education. Our topics of discourse range from masculinity, resumes, networking, relationships, you name it. See, what we're trying to do is really push this envelope in regards to attachment. We take a holistic approach to education. We develop good people, and then in turn, they manifest into great educators. People over pedigrees, dispositions over degrees. Man, I think my, about my, my, our first fellow, uh, Alex Halstead, Dillon University, uh, attendee, arbitrary major, like a lot of our young black men, walking around Dillon's campus, not much direction, creative writing, major, didn't have a plan, was told to go to school like a lot of us was told to go to school because it's the right thing to say from your parents. Alex had no direct, true direction. Alex came into our program, we put Alex in front of the kids, he became a mirror, but also they became a mirror for him as well. 
See, it's a double reflection. When black kids see a black male and then a black male sees a black kid, they reflect for themselves. And that's what we do. We create the connection to the classroom. For a demographic and representation and, and a group that hasn't been represented, as far as education, as long as I can remember, they've been removed from the conversation from an intellectual standpoint as students, but also as teachers. As I think about it, man, I think three, five, ten years from now, if we circle back to the conversation about what do you want to be, and I pose that question again to my young boys, maybe we can add a couple names to those lists. Maybe we can say Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and also Mr. Halstead, and maybe even Mr. Irvin. Yeah, Mr. Irvin. I like the ring of that. Thank you. <laughs>